Now, we're going to continue the presentation from where we left. So, we were talking about the different type of network. I just talked a little bit about local area network. Now, I'm going to talk about the wide area network. So, I already give a lot of explanation about wide area network. I explained this is a network where you connect many local area network together. And uh, this graphic here and is, a, is an explanation of what I was talking earlier. So you can see it's like this part represents a network, let's say that is in Massachusetts. This is another network uh, in Rhode Island, and this is a network in New Jersey, and this is a network uh, in uh, any other part of the country. So this is a business that have four locations and four different states, and uh, all the network are connected together to a wide area network. So this is the reason why I put that graphic here to explain exactly how all the local area network can be connected together to the ISP provider. Now, let's move for metropolitan area network. A metropolitan area network, as I said, is when you connect many different network, but not all over the place, only network that are located in uh, a city or in uh, many cities that are connected together by land. So this is what the, the metropolitan area network is. It's just a smaller version of a wide area network. And uh, most metropolitan area network are used for business that have location in one city. We have the campus area network. The campus area network is a network that uh, serve a college, a college campus or a university. As I said, a campus area network is different from a local area network because of the amount of computing device that involve. So you need uh, more, um, more advanced device. Like if, uh, if you're going to do a home office network or small local area network, you can go by anywhere there. They sell the water in every staple or micro center. You go by any, any small water. However, if you're going to do a campus network, the fact that it's require an enterprise infrastructure, you will need a Cisco rider, a commercial Cisco rider. And for the switch, the amount of device you're going to have to connect to that switch, you will need a, a commercial grade switch. It's not like you can go to micro center or go to any staple to buy a switch. So you understand is is the, the amount of device, the amount, the load of data that network will have to handle. So you need a commercial grid network for a campus area network. We have, we have story area network too. I don't even consider that as a network, but however, now you can buy a storage drive that is designed only for network. So you can put that drive in the network operating system will see that drive. You can use that drive as a cloud. This is where you're going to save every single data that, that come from any computer on the network. So a lot of people have those kind of storage drive. They plug it like they plug any computing device on, a, on the switch. And most people call it a server. You can use a storage media as a file server this is where everybody's going to save their file so come check call it a storage area network so the storage area network consists of storage device the operating system can see um all of those device in the storage area network and um, all you have to do is to buy those device and attach it to the network. Actually, most storage area network, or if you use uh, Windows Pro or you use Windows Enterprise, automatically the configuration will be done. You will not need to do anything else. But remember, 
if you have one of those devices you want to attach to your local area network, you have to make sure that you have at least Windows Pro. Even if you don't have a server to install a server operating system, but at least you must have Windows Pro in order for those those device to work. So let's move for the next slide. As I said, personal area network is a smaller computer network used for communication purpose, composed with, with small computer device. Uh, most of the time, your mobile device and your tablets will be connected together in a local area network. So we have wide um, wireless local area network is a lane that use radio frequency as communication medium. So for those type of network, they easy to install the fact that you don't have to run any cable. So you just put a wireless access point and automatically you work in the area covered by your access point. The access point will assign an IP address to your device and you will be able to use the internet connection or the network connection. So when we do, when you study local area network, I will explain you all the steps you have to take to make sure that your wireless area network is protected. Because when they talk about radio frequency, it's the same way as a radio station. The same way if you have a small radio recept receptor, you can go to any place, just put it in the frequency, you can listen to any radio. This is the same time too. They are equipment. You can just go to the area covered by your wireless network and you can capture all the data in the area in your wireless area network. So you have to be careful because it's like your data is being broadcast. So anybody that have a one of those little devices, they call them a, a packet sniffer or they are software you can download on your cell phone. Those are packets, sniffer software. You can capture all the data flying around in the local area network. This is not really a very safe way to communicate in your network. However, um, in this class, I will explain the different type of step, the different type of technology you can use to make sure that data in your local area network are encrypted, so people, data that are scripted, people will not be able to see what the data contain. They will see the data, but they will never be able to see the content of the data. So it is very important to understand, this is one type of, uh, of uh, networking communication that are very, very common this day due to the fact that you don't have to use um, to use wiring because some area you cannot even do wiring because uh, some of the building they have uh, city ordinance that stop that will prevent people from using wire wiring. So it is very important to understand it's not in every place you can do wiring. So in those places, wireless network are very convenient. So all of these are possible because of Ethernet. So a lot of people sometimes they have difficulty to make the difference between, between Ethernet and Internet. Ethernet is the technology that allow us to build local area network. This is the technology that manage, that organize, that provide all the tools for local area network. So, internet is the term used to indicate the world wide web. So we say the local area network is when you connect many devices together in one geographical area. We say the wide area network is when you connect many local area network together. But if you connect many wide area network together, you can have an intranet. So that means your business, 
from every part of the world can be communicated together to an intranet, which is different from the internet. But you can, when you connect wide area network in every part of the world together, it gives you what we call the World Wide Web, the WWW, or the internet. So the ethernet is a technology. The internet is when you connect all wide area network together all over the world. So, most cable wired link are based on the internet standard developed by Digital Equipment Corporation, Intel and Xerox. Maybe for you, this company is outdated. Nobody talk about Xerox anymore. But the fact that Xerox was one of the first company that was sitting down trying to develop the network that allow us to do today to have wide, wide area network or the internet, the name of network will never be forgotten. Because every time people think about networking, they will always think about, about, uh, about Xerox. And the other company is Digital. Digital Equipment Corporation is a company that is not making a lot of noise today. However, Digital Equipment Corporation was the second company that was sitting down on the table trying to develop network technology, and last was Intel. So those three companies have the patent for almost all the technology because those three was sitting down on the table originally to develop the Ethernet, which is the technology that we are using today for all network purpose. So there are four types of Ethernet speed now. We have the 10 megabits per second, and most of the time you will see 10 base or 10 base T. 10 base mean that that network can provide a speed of 10 megabits per second is baseband, that means all type of media can be run in, on in that network. This is what the baseband means. And the T means twisted pair, that means it uses UTP or STP cable. And uh, probably in the next, in the next uh, segment of this presentation, I will talk about about twisted pair cable. But what I want you to understand now, there are four types of internet standard. One is the 10 megabits. Now the 10 megabits, internet is so fast. A lot of people think the 10 megabits is not enough. So if you're talking about a home office or some area, the internet service provider cannot provide you more than 10 megabits. So you still have the 10 megabits, but now the common, the common Ethernet standard use is the 100 megabits per second. This is what they call the 100 bit T. The 100 means it has a bandwidth of 100 megabit per second. So that means the truth put, the truth output is 100 megabits per second, is baseband, and the T means twisted pair. So you're going to hear a lot about 100 base T. This is now the common internet, um, internet use for home and home office. And also we have the, the, one, the 1000 megabits and the 10 megabits, which is for faster network. Uh, most of the time you use those type of fast internet in uh, commercial grid network. So we're going to stop with that segment now and we're going to have another segment for the same presentation.